I gave Iceland, one of the worst footballing nations in all of Europe, a 1.2 billion pound TV deal every single year for 500 years. The results? Well, they were insane. Iceland are currently sitting around 70th in the world in terms of FIFA rankings, behind countries like Uzbekistan and Montenegro. The Icelandic First Division sits in 49th place in Europe. By the time we have finished simming 500 years, I expect both the league and country to be sitting at the top of the footballing world and the Icelandic clubs to be dominating the Champions League every single year. Because if you're getting 100 million pounds funneled into your club every single season, you have to be winning something, don't you? Before we begin, I need to simulate to the end of the very first season because Football Manager starts us halfway through. The teams who are in the top division for the start of the second season are going to receive 100 million pounds every single year for the rest of time, and those teams below won't. So rip to the teams who are just going to be relegated because you're missing out on quite a bit of money. Now that's out the way, let's jump forward 25 years into the future and see if Iceland has improved at all. Okay, simming all this time has taken me a bit longer than I've expected and I've had to change locations because it's Christmas. And now we've simmed 25 years into the future and Iceland has done pretty good, I think. Um, in terms of the country, they've jumped from 70th in the world rankings all the way to 33rd, which is a pretty decent jump. And the league has jumped from 49th to 23rd in terms of competition ranking. So that's also a pretty decent improvement. In terms of who's won the league, it's been predominantly dominated by Bredoblik, which I'm absolutely butchering. They've won it 14 times in 25 years that we've seen so far. So that's pretty good dominance. In terms of the European competitions for the clubs, no team has done well, so we won't bother checking that. And Iceland as a country also hasn't done well in the Euros or the World Cup. So let's now jump forward to 50 years into the future and we'll be in the year 2073 and I'll check back in with you guys then. All right, and after simming to the year 2073, Iceland has had a major improvement as a nation. They've become a mainstay in the World Cup, making it all the way to the quarterfinal where they lost 1-0 to France. As a result, the world ranking of Iceland has jumped up all the way to 24th and I can imagine them winning at least one World Cup by the end of this 500 year experiment, surely. Moving over to the league, it's now in 17th place, which is another improvement. The league has been shared around a bit more since we last checked in, but it's still been Bredoblik who have been dominating. But now HK have come to the party. In terms of European competitions for the clubs, there's still been no Icelandic winner yet, which is a bit disappointing considering they've had so much money by this point. And to kind of speed things up and hopefully get a winner, I'm going to now sim another 50 years until we're 100 years in the future in the year 2123. Hopefully by then we have a European winner and maybe Iceland has won a World Cup. Alright, it's the year 2123, 100 years into the future and I wish I could say Iceland were a European competition winner for anything, but I can't. The league has fallen down to 23rd place and I am very disappointed. For the country of Ireland, I guess we have some good news. Um, they are in 20th place in the world, which is a big bonus for them. And they actually made a World Cup final. This final happened in the year 2106, and unfortunately, Iceland got absolutely hammered 4-1. But that's pretty good still considering that 100 years ago, they were ranked 70th in the world. They haven't been as lucky in the Euros, however, only making it to the semi-finals, and that was in the year 2088. Moving over to the league now, and there has been a number of teams that have actually won it now, so having a nice mixture of teams in there, which is good. I do think that Iceland needs a bit more time to get some of these teams to win some European competitions because none of them have so far, which is really sad. They've been getting absolutely crazy amounts of money, so I think we need to take another massive jump this time. So let's now jump to the year 2223, which will be 200 years into the future. And hopefully by then we've surely won something with Iceland and the league, the teams in the league have won something as well. Okay, the year is 22-23 and I'm really disappointed. The league is stuck in 27th place. We can see that they were up in 23rd in 22, 19 and 18, but they're just really not improving. Since we last checked in, Vikinger has pretty much been the best team. Um, let's have a look through how many times they've won it. They had a big stand in 2166 where they won it 10 times in 13 years. So that's really, really insane. And then they just have a massive spurt of dominance after that, winning that like 20 or so times, 30 or so times in 30 years. But as of late, it's been KA and KR who have been the best teams in the league. For the country of Iceland though, it's been a huge improvement. They're now in seventh place in the world. Firstly, taking a look at the Euros, and Iceland has won one. They've actually won a Euros. They've been runners-up heaps of times in 2148, 2184, and 2196, but they became the champions in 2188. 
And it actually came after a nil-all draw which went to penalties and Iceland became victorious after beating England in the penalties. So a very nice revenge story considering that England cost them a World Cup, smashing them a couple of years earlier. And moving over to the World Cup, when we last checked in, um, there was a few weird teams that have won it, like Australia. Wasn't too upset about that, but they did win it. And Italy had just won the latest one. And since then, um, yeah, Iceland has dominated. I was wondering if Iceland could get one World Cup win, but instead they've got me five. That's right, in the years 2182, 2190, 2198, 2206, and recently as last year in 2222, Iceland have been the World Cup winners. The first one happened in 2182 where they won 1 0 against Portugal. Then a few years later in 2190, they actually won in another penalty win against England after finishing 0 all. Then in 2198, uh, yeah, they became victorious after winning in extra time. So they really like leaving it late when it comes to cup finals. The one after that they won in 2206 was against England and they won 2 0. So they've just been smashing England at the final step of pretty much every tournament. Then the most recent one they came up against Slovakia and won 1 0. Coming back to the past winners list, and I, I just wanted to point out that in the stretch of seven World Cups, Iceland won four of them which means pretty much every second year here we can see that they won the World Cup, which is absolutely crazy. And I think it's because they're producing players like Bjorn Emilsson, who obviously has come from Valur in 22-10. It's weird that it says 10-15 to there. But obviously, they have players like this bloke who has been bred and born at the local clubs. And I'm guessing it's because the local clubs have been putting in heaps of money to youth recruitment and training facilities. And it's no wonder that they're ranked 7th in the world. I'm going to go take a look now at the highest ranking that they've had. Okay, so even after winning so many World Cups, they've never actually been 1st in the world. Their highest world ranking was 2nd, and that was in for a 3-year stint in 2207 to 2209. And since then, they've kind of fallen down to 5th, 6th, and 7th. But I think that's crazy. They've won four World Cups in seven years and they weren't even the best team in the world. Taking a look at the records, the most expensive Icelandic player is Bjorn Emilsson, who we spoke about before, who got sold for £152 million. Now we've done 200 years, let's now go to the end of the experiment, which will be 500 years, and see what's happened then. I'm guessing that Iceland is winning every single World Cup, and the Icelandic teams are winning the Champions Leagues and the Europa League every, every single year, pretty much. Alright, and we've made it to the final stop of the experiment in the year 25, 23, 500 years in the future. And I am so disappointed in this league. It's in 39th place as of late. They were in 24th last year. I think around this kind of time, the leagues just jump up and down. If we take a look at the actual competition reputations, the Belgian League is the best league, and the Greek League is the second, and then you've got Northern Ireland in third. So things have gotten really whack. Things have gotten so whack that, in fact, Iceland are first in the world rankings. They finally made it up to first, and let me tell you, they've won some World Cups. Just by looking at the amount of numbers on this screen, you can see that they have won a ridiculous amount of everything. Let's get into it. So in terms of the World Cup, they've now won it 24 times, which makes them the most successful team of any nation of anywhere in the world. When we last checked off, they won it in 22-22, and it took them a few like, heaps of years to actually get back into the winners list. In 22-46, they actually beat Argentina. Um, I am happy to see lots of Australias in here. That makes me very happy. But they finished third on a number of occasions, we can see. Moving up, we have them winning in 2278, uh, where they beat Portugal, and then they beat South Korea again in 2290. And then they have another massive absence of about 40 years or so, until they beat England one more time in the World Cup final. Um, I just think they hate England. Moving on from there, it took them 20 years to get back in the winners list where they beat China, and we can see that China has absolutely been dominating in this little stage here in 20, the, the mid-2300s. After they beat China, it took them two more World Cups until they beat the Netherlands, and then after that, we have another little absence, but then it becomes Iceland Central, where they beat Mexico, it had, a, had a bad World Cup, then they beat Latvia, South Korea, Netherlands, three in a row. 
had a, had a couple more World Cups off, and then they beat Latvia again. And then you can see that they just kind of sprinkle in a win every few years now. And as of late, they did beat Uruguay in the final in 25-22, which was last year. Um, they beat them 2-1. Moving back to the league, um, when we last checked off, it was KR and KA winning it. And KA go on a massive winning streak here. But then we've got some Viking and KA, they're... Looking like the most dominant team, but then Stajanin come in. I'm not saying any of these names correctly, but they have a big streak of dominance here. And then Vestry come in, KR. So it's kind of flipped around. KR win a lot in a row. Back to Stajanin, but Vikinger and Grinva Grindavik. I don't know how to say that name. Grindavik uh, do really good for a number like 30 or 40 years here, which is pretty good for them. And that's Vestry, back to everyone. I'm just going to quickly sim through this. You can stop it if you want to look. Velo have a nice win here. Um, I don't really care too much, but if we go to the records, the most times won is 115 by Vikinger. And I'm not sure if that's because they won heaps before the simulation started, but I think if we're having a look at it since the simulation kind of started, I think that it's either between them and Grindavik or whatever their name is. But I have been putting this off. I didn't show you guys in the last thing because I was just so disappointed in Iceland. And now we're seeing my reaction for the first time. They hadn't won a Champions League. No Icelandic team had won a Champions League. And I'm going to go back through it now with you. And you can pause and have a look at this. I'm just going to quickly time lapse through this. While this is time lapsing, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And also let me know down below in the comments what other challenges and experiments you'd like me to do. And if you actually like these videos, um, I really appreciate it. And now let's go and get back to what we're really here for. So I couldn't see any Icelandic team winning a Champions League in there, which is so, so disappointing. I'm not going any further because my computer is actually going to blow up if I ask it to sim any more years. It's sim 500 and I think it's done a pretty good job. Let's go take a look at the Europa League. And I think a better way to do this is by having a look through all of the clubs. So our first winner of a Euro European Europa League was KA. I'm definitely not trying to even say that name. But they won it in the year 2242. Another club that won it was Tijanin in the year 2363. But that was the only two times that an Icelandic team won a European Cup in the Europa League or Champions League, which is so, so disappointing. Let's now have a look at the Conference League, which Iceland has absolutely been dominating. We can see here that Stajanin actually came runners up twice, but if we go down, we Valer came runners up three times. We've got Vikinger, who won the league 115 times, who were only able to win the Conference League one time in 22-16, so that is just woeful. We've got Fram, who came runners up in 2095. Grindavika, who came runners up twice and then won it in 2396. And then you've got KA, who also won it twice in 2225 and 2263. KR won it once and came runners up once. So, very disappointing that teams weren't even really able to win that many conference leagues either. And I did check the two teams in the division below and they weren't able to win it either. So, so disappointing from these massive clubs. 100 million into their club every single year and they weren't even able to win a Champions League. But that is going to do us today. I would say that the experiment has been a massive fail considering that no teams are even able to come close to winning a Champions League. When I did this in Gibraltar, at least the team was able to come runners up in the Champions League. They weren't able to win it, but at least they came close. No team has even come close to winning it in this. I do want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this has taken me so much longer than I had expected. Simming 500 years into the future takes a very, very long time. So I hope you guys appreciated uh, the effort put into this one because it took me forever. Um, if you want to see another video like this, go click on this one here. It's when I simmed 200 years for Gibraltar. I did the same kind of TV deal for them there. And if you want to know um, if you should invest in your stadium, or you should invest in your training facilities, click on this video here because it's also a pretty decent video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.